All right, algebra, we're gonna do lesson 88. It's not bad, I promise. It's gonna be great. Stick with me. Black math! Give me some math and I'll give you some flack. Black math! All right, lesson 88. We're gonna talk about quadratic equations. Do you guys remember what quadratics are? Quadratics have a degree of two. That means the highest exponent in there is a two. So quadratic equations are second degree polynomial equations. All right, so look at this. Four minus three X equals two X squared. This is a quadratic equation because that two is the highest exponent. Now we like to put this in what's called standard form. So standard form has everything on one side with zero on the other, okay? So if I move all this over here, I can do that. So then I'd have zero equals two X squared. Get rid of, bring that three X. Remember the shortcut to bring a term over is just to oppositeize it. So negative three X over here would be positive three X over here. Positive four over here would be negative four over there, okay? Or you can just add three X to both sides at minus four from both sides and you still end up with the same thing. So this is standard form, but we like to have it with, I just, I like to have it with everything on the left with zero on the right. So once you have an equation, you can swap sides and you don't have to do anything, okay? That's standard form. All right, well, every quadratic in standard form has an A value, which is your coefficient of your X squared term, and it has a B value and it has a C value. So your B value is your coefficient of your X term and your C value is your constant. So every standard form, standard form can be written like this. So generically, it would be a x squared plus b x plus c equals zero. Okay. So a is your coefficient of your x squared term, b is your coefficient of your x term, and c is your constant or your coefficient of your constant term, which is just the constant. Okay. So let's put an equation up here. Let's say that x squared minus three x minus ten equals zero. So what's your A, B, and C? Well, your A, remember, is your coefficient of your X squared term. Well, if there's no number there, what number is it? One. Your B is your coefficient of your X term. So I, cir I circled that subtraction sign because remember, B is not three, it's negative three. So B equals negative three. And then your C is your constant, so your C equals negative 10, okay? This will come in handy a little bit later. All right, well, what, let, what X's will make this true? Let's see what happens if X equals five. If X equals five, I'm gonna just plug it into here. So five squared minus three times X, which is five minus 10 equals zero. Let's see if that works. 25 minus 15 minus 10 equals zero. Do that, 25 minus 15 is 10 minus 10 is zero. It works, but guess what? There's another solution that will work. Let's try negative two. If X equals negative two, let's plug it in. Negative two squared minus three times negative two minus 10. Let's see if that equals zero. Well, that's four minus three times negative two is negative six minus 10 equals zero. Let's chicken scratch. <laughs> Minus negative six is plus positive six. So four plus six is 10 minus 10 is zero. So that works, that's cool. All right, well, here's what happens when you have a quadratic equation. Sometimes, most of the time, you have two solutions, okay? So your solutions are negative two and five, but you'll never have more than two solutions. So every quadratic equation has at most two solutions. So that has a degree of two. So your degree of the equation is a good indicator of how many solutions you might have. So if you have a degree of three, then you could have up to three solutions. If you have a degree of four, then you could have up to four solutions. Okay, does that make sense? Cool. All right, the next part of this, we're gonna solve a quadratic equation. This is gonna be cool. All right. So let's say we've got a quadratic equation that looks like this. 
All right, well, the first thing I'm gonna do when you're solving a quadratic equation, we're gonna factor it. There's different ways to solve a quadratic equation, but we're gonna solve a quadratic equation by factoring it. So the first step to solving quadratic equations by factoring is to get everything on one side with zero on the other. So let's put it all on the left side since that will keep that x squared positive. So here's how I'm gonna rewrite the equation, x squared minus 3x minus 18 equals zero. Remember the shortcut, to bring a term over, you just negate it, okay? Second step to solving by factoring is to factor. So we're gonna factor. How does this factor? Well, let's see what works. X and X, what two numbers multiply to get negative 18 but added together to get negative six? That would be negative six and positive three. Because when you FOIL that out, you get x squared plus three x minus six x, which combined to a negative three x. Then the last term, it's negative six times three is negative 18. That works. All right, so now we're gonna talk about the zero factor theorem. Here's what the zero factor theorem says. If two numbers equal zero, so a times b equals zero, that means one of them has to be zero. Then a equals zero or b equals zero. Or technically they could both equal zero, okay? But one of them has to be zero. So in this case, when you have x minus six and x plus three multiplied together to get zero, one of these has to be zero. If one of these parentheses was zero, then this equation would be true. So you could say that x minus six has to be zero or x plus three has to equal zero, okay? Well, what x will make this zero? x equals six. What x will make this zero? x equals negative three, all right? So those are the two solutions in this equation that will work. You can plug them in and see if it works. It works, I promise. All right, let's try another one. Example two, here's my quadratic equation. Negative 25 equals negative four x squared. Okay, first step to solving equations by factoring is to get everything on one side with zero on the other. So I'm gonna pull this, this negative four x squared over here because that will make it a positive four x squared and we want our x squared term to be positive. So four x squared minus 25 equals zero. Okay, second step, factor. What's the first step of factoring? See if there's any greatest common factor that you can pull out of that. Nope, nothing goes into both four and 25 and there's only X's in one term. Second step, see if it's a difference of two squares. It is, it's a difference of two squares. So how do you factor a difference of two squares? Square root of first, square root of second, one of them's addition, one of them's subtraction, boom, you're done, okay? So now that it's factored, the third step to solving by factoring is to set each parenthesis equal to zero. 2x plus five equals zero, or 2x minus five equals zero, okay? Now let's solve for those two x's. So let's see, minus five, minus five, 2x equals negative five, divide by two, divide by two, x equals negative five halves. All right, what about over here? Well, add five, add five, two x equals five, divide by two, divide by two, x equals five halves. So x equals negative five halves or positive five halves in this equation. Example three, x minus 56 equals negative x squared. Okay, first step, get everything on one side with zero on the other. I'm gonna put everything on the left side because that sucker's negative. So I want it to be positive. So x squared plus x minus 56 equals zero. Second step, factor. What two numbers multiply to get negative 56 but add up to get positive one? That's plus eight and x minus seven. All right, now set each parenthesis to zero or you could probably just figure out what x will make this zero, what x's will make these zero, okay? Well, if this was a negative eight, negative eight plus positive eight equals zero. And that would be zero times who cares because this is zero, zero times anything is zero. Well, what X will make this zero? It looks like positive seven, seven minus seven equals zero. They don't have to be both zero. 
They just have to be one or the other. So you have two options, x equals negative eight or positive seven. Boom. All right, one more example. Here we go, example four. 3x squared minus 6x equals 9. Okay, first step, get everything on one side. So let's pull that 9 over here. So we have 3x squared minus 6x minus 9, because it's positive 9 on the right side, equals 0. Second step, factor. What's the first step of factoring? Yes, take out the greatest common factor. 3 times x squared minus 2x minus 3 equals 0. See what I did? I just took a three out. Now look what happens. Now I could just stop, right? I could keep factoring or I could notice, hey, what happens if I just divide everything by three? Look what happens. That just disappears because what's zero divided by three? Zero. So here's my equation. X squared minus two X minus three equals zero. So it's like that three was never there. That's okay. Press pause, solve this. All right, so here's what you should have gotten. Let's see, the next step after we got everything on one side was to factor. So let's factor this. What two numbers multiply to get negative three, but add to get negative two, negative three and positive one, because negative three times one is negative three, but negative three plus one is negative two. All right, now what X's will make this true? Well, you could just solve, just rewrite the two equations, or you could figure out that, okay, x has to be 3 or negative 1. Because 3 will make this parenthesis 0 and negative 1 will make this parenthesis 0. All right, that's it. How's that feel? Does that feel okay? Does that feel okay? Okay, good job. You did it. That was lesson 88. Boom. Black man!